This time on Pedalbox, we're making some removable access panels over our intercooler holes here, and we're also going to be covering up some OSHA violations around our bodywork. So it's been a little while since the last episode you saw on this car was filmed. Um, we've been basically off this project for three months with illness, work schedules, weather, and me being out of the country for the better part of three weeks, which has been a little bit difficult to schedule everything around. But we didn't just simply lay by the wayside. We have been buying and measuring up things. And as a result, we've got lots and lots of parts that we can fit in the next few episodes, which is good news. So all of our lovely patrons who have been sponsoring us, they have helped us to purchase a plethora of well, rubber U channel, I guess, in this episode. This is the better part of 20 meters of fairly thin U section rubber that we're going to put on all of the sharp edges around the car. And Chris has a bigger version that we're going to put on the front. Yeah, so this is going to go around our splitter. It's going to give us our legal 5 mil radius requirement so that we're not like, I don't know, de-ankling people and stuff as we drive around. <laughs> de-ankling us as we're standing and walking around the, the drive. Yeah. Uh, we've also got loads and loads of sharp edges all the way around our bonnet, I suppose you could call this, around yeah. the duct and the outer edges, around the, the engine end. bay cover yeah. at the back. And we've also got to retrim uh, around our wing mirrors and oh, all of yeah. our inner inner wheel latches because we've also hijacked and stolen little bits of I bits of this stuff off of those. I keep forgetting about the wing mirror trim that we never yeah. actually put on and kept stealing from other places yeah. and putting back, even though we hadn't finished doing the inner arches. So that's all going to get done today. The wing mirrors are going to get finally mounted. Um, and as Chris says, we're going to put finish off the splitter so it doesn't end up on the 10% list. Yeah. So more or less every time you've seen us put any rubber trim on things, there's been like the same two foot. <laughs> of rubber trim just moving yes. from one part of the car to just, the other. Just robbed and hopping it around and that, so yeah. that ends today. Finally. So at the front of the car we've got this stuff here which is fairly chunky. It's 18mm thick at its thickest point and the gap inside of it is 9mm which is perfectly sized to go around our plywood here. So I'm just going to start feeding this on. It is a little bit tricky to install but we have noticed it holds itself in place fairly well which in fairness is why it's tricky to install. It's kind of perfectly snug and it means that hopefully once this is all on we won't need to use any adhesives or anything to hold it in place. So if we do ever tear it or need to replace it for any reason, we should be able to just pull it off and throw a new one on just like that. So for the back of the car, we've got some smaller U-section channel. This is only about nine mil wide at its widest point. Um, and this takes a one to three millimeter sheet of material into the center, like steel, aluminium, perspex, whatever you want, it will all go in. And this is about, I think it's six or seven mil deep that it will go on, which is roughly speaking what we've left here. Now I'm gonna put this one across the very back of the car. So this just fits across here and this cross member is actually three millimeter steel. This is the proper three mil angle iron rather than the box section that we cut up to, to make the um, edge pieces. Now Chris has already put the one on that side as well. So I'm just going to pop the, one of the slightly shorter ones on here. So the top edge is slightly less critical because you're more likely to be leaning on this. And as I say, this piece is razor sharp. These edges down here are the same three mil wall that we used on the back. So these aren't as much of an issue, but these ones are extremely sharp. And I have cut myself once already on this one and a few times on a couple of other bits, which is why I ended up ordering a lot of this. So now we need to see whether or not this will close. And unfortunately, this is slightly too long and it's almost an interference fit along this back edge to this panel. So we're not necessarily going to be able to put the rubber edging right across the back, which is a little bit unfortunate. But if I take this one off, we can test the join between the clamshell and the main body. And my hope is that this will fit nicely down between the two. 
Okay, that is a much better fit. The gap from the front to the back is even. Now, the next question is, does it fall off when I lift it out? No, which is good. So that means that this will hold itself on, although I suspect we'll have the same problem we had at the front with this being a, a, um, an exterior radius. Uh, we might have to do this in two pieces or cut a little notch just so it gets around this bend. We're going to have to do something about this back edge. Well, we don't have to do something about this back edge, but it would be nice to still have a rubber um, seal across the back here. But at least the side ones should work. And there is still an elephant in the room when it comes to sealing up this clamshell. Now, the reason this happened was when this panel was folded over, for a start, I didn't have this panel in to, to use as a reference. And unfortunately, just with bending the material around and flattening it and trying to keep it down, it dipped in the middle. So this edge and this edge are exactly the same height and in line with this. This edge is dead straight and it just dips down in the middle about half an inch, maybe, maybe a little bit more. So about 12 to 15 millimeters if you're working in metric. And we need to stop weather and the outside getting in down onto the engine because if it rains it will just fall in there is a drip edge across the back but it does nothing as you can see the screwdriver goes right between the two of them so it's not helpful using any kind of sealant like this would kind of work we could probably get away with it putting it on the underside flange of the clamshell but really it's not a good solution we it would seal it but it would look really really nasty with just a sort of a weird hole, a weird dip across the top of the body. So, the solution, or at least a solution that we're currently working on, is putting in a dam-like piece of steel across the back here, probably either one mil or one and a half mil, which will go right the way across the back, and that will hold whatever packing material we use to bring these levels up, so it comes up to the back of the clamshell. Now that level itself is really important because of the way the clamshell opens, if we have this lined up right along with the top edge, so this is perfectly smooth and goes up into the edge there, Chris opens the bonnet, you can see it clashes and it will either go underneath or it will try and just push this and bend it and it will shove it off and ruin whatever panel we, whatever fix for this panel we put in. So if we lower it, basically the thickness of, of this round over, which I think is about five, five to six mil, so it comes just to the bottom edge of this panel there, it actually clears well, apart from that little edge, but it clears reasonably nicely and goes underneath. And we can get away with then having the sealant on the, uh, sorry, the, the rubber seal on the underside. We can extend the drip uh, tray, the, um, the drip channel up in the same manner so that it catches water and runs it down the side and we can also pack this with something and there's a couple of different options we can use for that as well we can use the same foam that we did on here because we have a reasonable success with that but it's going to be very thin by the time we get over to these edges and actually cutting it that thinly is going to be very difficult the other reasonable way is expanding foam and we have the little dam in and then we can shape it to exactly what what we need um, and we can open this obviously and close it so we make sure that we miss everything across there uh, and it's not going to interfere and, and damage the foam and what would ultimately be the bodywork which is the most reasonable thing I can think of uh, to create something that we can work with and adjust as we go on without making another metal panel, putting it on, discovering that it's also out of shape and then ruining it when we open this and just, yeah, it would be a nightmare. So as bad as it sounds and as much as I hate myself for saying it, I think a little dam, expanding foam, resin, bondo and smoothing it out at this point in the project is the most correct way that we can go. You'd be happy to hear this isn't the whole episode of just us putting seals on bits of car. We thought that'd get boring after about 30 seconds, but I think we've given you about five minutes of it anyway. So we're going to give you a bit of fabrication now. We're getting back to form. Now, you might be able to guess from the rust that this is a piece of metal that we cut and shaped quite a long time ago. And so far, we've been putting off putting it in just because it's not quite as simple as just welding it on around the edge. This actually needs to be removable because underneath here is, on both sides, is the ear connection from our boost bar that runs across the car to the intercooler. So the intercooler exit is just about where my hand is down here. We need to be able to get a silicon elbow on there and it all has to be removable, which means that this panel has to be take a removable so that we can get access, which makes the fabrication just a tad more tricky, which is enough that we've not bothered doing. So it's gonna sit on here like that eventually, but to make sure it aligns right when we're installing it, we're gonna build up a little frame underneath it first out of some bits of angle, which is our customary uh, half inch box cut it or one inch box cut in, uh, into, into halves and quarters. 
and some flat bar. So we're going to make a little frame out of this inside the cavity first so that we know it fits and it aligns everything. And then once the frame is done, we're going to weld that skin onto it. We're also going to weld a bit of reinforcement bracing in so that it can actually support the weight of our backsides. Um, but that's a, that's a later problem. So what you've just seen me weld onto the bottom here is a couple of these little P-clips that Adrian's folded over in the garage, just a bit of steel that we've bent over. We've welded those onto the bottom and they give us a little bit of a sort of positive lock action. So as we drop this thing in, they bend round the tube and then ping into place around it and hold it in. So if I drop this in now, it's a really good snug fit. There's no, no freedom of movement in there at all. It's really, really nice. And now granted, it's a sharp edge, so you need gloves on at the minute, but it does just lift up and out really quite nicely. And given that we've now completely run out of daylight, I'm currently being illuminated by a phone and two hand lights, I think we're probably going to call it a day there. Go make up another one of these in the garage and we'll get back to you tomorrow. It is now tomorrow and here is one of our completed access covers over the intercooler. Now it's looking pretty good, I like to think. Uh, we didn't want to warp the panel because obviously it's a nice flat piece here. We didn't want to distort it like we have almost everything else that we've welded. So we've only spot welded it in in a few places around the edge, but to keep it sealed, we've gone around it all with silicon and everything else just to try and uh, try and dampen any, vib any, any vibration out of it. We did notice that when we sort of tapped on the edges, it used to ring quite badly where there's any play in it. So we've also thrown a load of dynamat on the inside of it just because we had lots of little off-cut spear, and that should hopefully try and keep it nice and smooth and quiet on it. It's quite heavy, it's got, got, got some good weight to it. So this is our first test fit since doing all the paint, so I'm just going to press it in and see what happens. That's actually really nice. I mean, I hoped it would be like that. I didn't, wouldn't say I expected it. And it pops out just like that. So yeah, we've got good access to our intercoolers. We'll be able to build and unbuild and rebuild our intake system nice and easily. Well, that's about it for this episode, folks. I hope you've enjoyed it. Now, if you're new to the channel, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and keep posted on future updates. Let us know what you think in the comments. Like the video if you liked the video, I guess. Now, if you want to support us in our madness on this project or our many, many others, you can jump on shop.pedalbox.show. You can buy some nice branded Pedalbox merch. I promise your hats, when you get them, will come a lot cleaner than this one. It's got a couple of years of wear on it. You can also jump on patreon.com forward slash Pedalbox show. Support us there for as little as a dollar a month. All of our patrons get early access to our videos and a discount at our merch store. So if you want to buy yourself a hat, jump on Patreon first. And you can probably save yourself a couple of quid. We've also got the Discord community, which is now open to all, has been for some time. We've got project channels in there where we've got a channel for this. We've got the Rover channels. We've got some like general chat all the usual sort of stuff it's a fun little crowd so i want to say a quick thanks to all of our patrons because that money goes into weird things weirdly expensive things like this this is about 80 quids worth of rubber extruded seals i don't know why it's that expensive but it is as are many other bits of the car like the pedal box and fuel tank and god knows what else so your patreon money is really really important for helping keep this thing going and don't forget to check out our discord server if you're so inclined we've got a link down in the doobly-doo below you can join us in there we've got project channels for this and the rover and the thunderbird and everything else and we've got a nice little community growing in there now it's a fun little place to hang out i think not that i'm biased or anything but yeah you know, i quite enjoy it so if you want to hang out there until the next episode comes out we'll see you in there thanks for watching folks we'll see you next time